Hello everyone, this video is to show you my modded Kerbal Space Program game. Kerbal Space Program is a space game with real world, or at least close to real world, orbital mechanics. You can design all of your own spaceships, you can even giant, giant mess of uh, rocket engines, fuel tanks, and random assorted parts like I have here today. I'm playing modded, so it's got some additional features that I can show you real quick here. So we have mods for quality, basic quality of life, like Kerbal Engineer that add additional readouts, allow you to better manage having a lot of different spaceships with Kerbal Alarm Clock, uh, make it a little bit easier to land in atmospheric bodies using trajectories, and have uh, slightly modified textures and stuff for parts using restock. Atmospheric uh, Astronomer's Pack adds in a lot of atmospheric effects and other visual enhancements and pulls in a bunch of these other visual enhancements mod mods that you'll see in this list. I also have the Kerbal Inventory System and Kerbal Attachment System, which are a popular way to be able to do things like manage parts as inventory items and then be able to edit spaceships while in orbit. There is a, now a built-in way to do that in the game, but I'm still kind of uh, liking the old system, so I'm still using this to modify spaceships in orbit. I also have a few other quality of life mods I've added here, like the science full reward mod that makes it easier to get science, and this for science mod which automatically collects science as opposed to having to do it manually. Definitely saved me a lot of painstaking effort as I'm going about my game. And then of course the two big mods that I have here is Progressive Colonization System by the awesome Nerm Nerm Nerm, who uh, they built this awesome snack mod with a whole progression system in it that is really unlike any of the other snack mods out there. Um, I love it, and it's the whole reason that I'm doing this playthrough. And then of course the other big mod in this uh, set of mods that I've chosen out here is extra planetary launch pods, which, pads, which allows you to essentially have rocket parts as a resource and be able to assemble new spaceships away from Kerbin if, of course, you build enough infrastructure to do all of the processing and management that that requires. I've got my own configs here with this, so it's kind of my own thing that I'm doing, and it's something that I've tried many times before. So this is just my latest attempt at it, and I wanted to show how it was going. Okay, so I wanted to show a few things here. I didn't want to just show what I've been building, because what I've been building is these kind of crazy contraptions like this. So like, for instance, these are greenhouses. And basically, I have a bunch of Kerbals that are going to get in, in this spaceship. And then we're going to do research on how to make better snacks. So right now, we are pretty close to the beginning of the game. We're starting at tier zero for research for uh, these greenhouses, and so we're going to launch these into space. The more greenhouses we have, the f faster we can do that research. So, you know, scale is a great thing to have. And so we have three farmers here, and then we have some other herbals on here to do some of the other roles for things like scrounging for materials for the greenhouses, etc. That's a basic craft, but it's an ambitious build here where we're going to be able to keep this thing powered night or day using uh, our in-situ refueling capabilities. So it's got, it got some things, some interesting things going for it here. And this particular craft here, I'm planning to take to Minmus. And I have a kind of interesting way of doing this that I haven't really seen a lot in the community, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to make this video. But basically, the traditional way that a lot of people launch their spaceships is they will have something, you know, on the launch pad, on Kerbin, and then they will launch it out and they will do this point where they get to orbit. And then once they get to orbit, they'll do a separate sort of intercept burn here to get to wherever they want to go. In this case, this visualization is all using the MUN. So if you have the, the MUN here, and this is kind of roughly where you would do your orbit. You kind of do your orbit kind of like at that, you know, the, the, the MUN is just kind of come over the horizon. You do your burn, and then... You intercept the mud. But the pesky thing here is, is you have to do this gravity turn, which means you have to build something which will be able to do this gravity turn. There's a, there's a lot of aerodynamics and having to worry about drag and stuff that goes into doing that. Um, so what I've been doing actually is I've been doing this thing where I burn straight up. So I go straight from being landed on Kerbin to a suborbital flight that goes directly sort of ballistically 
for whatever body it is I'm going for. And you can do these kind of ballistic trajectories for whatever you want. If you want to go to the the mun, you, you you kind of looking at this angle, and you have to estimate that angle you want to launch at. Uh, and that angle, by the way, doesn't have to be that. It's not that sensitive. So like these three orbits, these are all orbits where I did this sort of launch pattern where you launch one craft, you launch the next craft, you launch the next craft, um, one after the other. And you can see that there's quite a bit of wiggle room in terms of that angle where you intercept the, the MUN in this case. And the reason for that is because it's not just about the angle, it's also about how long you take to get there, right? So, you know, in, in one case, your orbit might um, take a little bit longer to get there, and that difference allows all three of these orbits to make a nice, close intercept, whether you want that to be in front or behind, or maybe you want a polar orbit, whatever you want. Um, you, you, you can do all of those things, and you don't have to get the angle perfectly. You just kind of got to, you know, gauge it sort of in the right ballpark for what you want. The nice thing about this is it, there's two things. So, so the, the biggest thing that this is nice for is I can just launch my crafts straight upwards. I don't have to worry about having a stage that's specifically for the gravity turn, having a stage that's specifically for circularization, having a stage that's specifically for intercept. I don't have to worry about which is which. I can do all of my burns kind of as one big burn. There's just one burn. So however many stages I have, it just needs to add up to the right amount of stuff. And then the other nice thing is, is that I typically, like, so with this craft, I don't really have, this craft has almost certainly got terrible aer aerodynamics. There's almost certainly more drag on the top half of this vessel than there is on the bottom. So if I was going to do a gravity turn, I would need to seriously plan out all kinds of like aerodynamic pieces that I wanted to add to the craft. As it is, because I'm going to be launching straight up, I can kind of just get away with that unstable balancing point where it's just, it goes straight up. And by, basically by the time the craft would start to have issues with drag, it's already in such thin atmosphere or even outside of the atmosphere, so it doesn't matter. Um, now we'll see how that works out because with this level of delta feed in the first stage, there might be some growing pains with it. We'll see. I haven't fully, I haven't tested out this booster setup, so we'll be able to see live if there's any issues with this particular way that I'm launching this craft. But the basic idea of what I want to do allows me to just do that going, moving straight upwards kind of approach. The other nice thing that you'll see with this this burn here is, is that you don't need to spend the extra delta V to raise your periapsis. Because when you want to go somewhere, you, you, you don't really care about that periapsis other than the fact that like you can't obviously do a burn underground. Um, so there's sort of a pro-con here. On the one hand, you don't waste delta V raising your periapsis. But on the other hand, you're not burning at periapsis. So there's an efficiency uh, trade-off here that you're sort of taking into account here. So I don't think this is one size fits all. I think there's totally crafts that would be more efficient doing the gravity turn and then launching the rest of the way. And there's definitely crafts and, you know, situations where this is going to be more efficient. Um, there is definitely situations where it's more efficient to do that direct uh, ballistic launch. Um, and those tend to correspond with having a, a, a relatively decent thrust to weight ratio. So I don't, I don't have any stages here with a particularly terrible thrust to weight ratio. But it's also not that crazy of the numbers that I have here for these thrust to weight ratios. So it, I'm, I'm not really like, this is, this is not like, you know, two plus thrust to weight ratio off the launch pad here that we're looking at, but it's also not that bad of a thrust to weight ratios that we're looking at here either. And I, part of the reason for that is I don't want to create too much drag on all these crazy, like not very aerodynamic services before we get to that thinner atmosphere either. Anyway, without further ado, let's see how well we can do a first on camera launch of this vessel to Minmus. All right, so we're going to get this spaceship off launched into space. So, one thing you'll see with the other shaft, uh, with the other ship that I launched during this launch window to. Minmus is, you can see all the boosters falling away from it already here, and they're all on suborbital paths here because of that direct ballistic burn that 
direct path that I'm taking to Minmus. So that's a nice artifact of this, whereas if you do those like circulation orbits and then those intercept orbits, you, if you shed any boosters during that time, then that's all sort of space junk considerations get a little bit more complicated than with these direct burns where everything, for the most part, for quite a long ways, falls back down to the surface. So then real quick here, I need to come back to deal with my asparagus staging. That's why this looks so crazy here, the way it's organized, because it's sort of draining all the fuel from these outside tanks even though all the engines are burning, which is sort of a nice way to improve some of the efficiency of how this craft operates. Now we're just rapidly getting on up on our way to Minmus. A few accidental Things are there, and then boom, okay, perfect. So that was, we actually went, got lucky there, right into potential intercept course here with where we want to go. So we can just in here, place a little maneuver node, like so, and then we'll go back to focusing on Minmus. the little trick where you reduce the thrust. All right, and there you have it. There's your intercept to Minmus. No need to go to orbit. A lot less hassle in some ways, in my opinion. So I also wanted to show you some of the other crafts that I launched here, of course while I'm at it. So this is the biggest craft that I've launched right now, and I'm especially interested at how horrified Nerm 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 might be if uh, this crazy. So this is 80 Kerbals on this craft right now. Um, these are all labs being used right now for crew training. And so the progression on here, very fast research here, all things considered, because the, the research scales with the amount of snacks being consumed, and there are uh, four of these hydroponic modules here on the ship. And so with four of these on the ship here, it's uh, it, each of these produces four snacks, but because of that, it's only contributing 20% of the diet, then we end up with this supporting 20 kerbals, you don't factor in all the other food that's required. So 20, 40, 60, 80 kerbals worth of snacks there. Uh, 32 of those kerbals are, are training for other professions. Basically what I did is, I, I, didn't, I didn't launch this to do the hydroponics research quickly. That was just sort of a side effect. The, the reason why I launched it this way is because I, I need... A certain number of Kerbals if I want to populate the entire Kerbal system. And so, you know, depending on how many bases you want and, and the requirements for each of those bases, it's it's quite a few Kerbals you actually need for your whole space program. And so that's basically what I wanted to accomplish here was just, you know, a certain number of Kerbals that I need for Mun and Minmus. You know, I want to send some Kerbals to Gilly and Moho and other places. So uh, just getting all of that started takes a lot of Kerbals. So these Kerbals are going to go going to go to Minmus and Train. They're going to go outside of the Kerbin Sphere of Influence, get that third star, all that good stuff. So right now, other stuff I have going on here. So an another version of that base I showed earlier. This is a slightly different variant, but it's going to look very similar. This one's already landed, so you can see what that looks like. So this one's landed here. Got your mining operation going on. You're getting your snacks. You're getting your scrounged stuff for everything. So you got your fertilizer factories, and it's well on its way for its own progression for getting to the next tier, which I've actually never gotten to. Always stopped a bit early on that. And over here we have... 
my refueling ship that I built. There's a lot of rough edges on this refueling ship, but I'm pretty happy in a lot of ways with it. So it's got a lot of drills and is able to basically collect fuel very, very quickly. And that's just a nice quality to have right now. It's got a bunch of science instruments stuck onto it so I can hop around and get all the different science. But as I'm winding that down, because I've got quite a bit of science as it is, it's going to be used for refueling. I want to make a much bigger refueling ship and I want to make one with wheels. So we'll see what I can do with that. This is the current state of the art for me over here. And that's pretty much it. You got the hydroponics, you got the, the, the farmable snacks. I'm trying to get all the research for Mun and Minmus in terms of the progressive colonization mod, which is an awesome mod. You should check it out. And if you have any suggestions for what I should be doing better, maybe differently, maybe I'm a little overkill or a little underkill on something, let me know.